Hello friends, I am happy to announce a new video series ECG Simplified and here we are going to learn everything about ECG starting from basics to clinical application. The first topic is the cardiac dipole. Cardiac dipole, you can imagine like a battery within the heart which is actually going to generate this ECG. And these are the further topics I have planned in the phase one of the video series. We are going to discuss the fundamental concept more in detail so that when we go into cons complex topics it will be easy for us let's ask the fundamental question what are we actually recording in ECG one of the basic answer we get is it's a surface recording of cardiac electrical activity that is we have millions of cardiomyocyte which is having an action potential and some of the all action potential recorded from the surface looks like this this is a simple definition of a ECG but this definition will not help us to explain all the phenomena underlying the ECG. So we are going to define something called as an instantaneous cardiac vector. And the answer to our question, what are we actually recording is, we are recording a direction and amplitude of instantaneous cardiac vector. How does this cardiac vector comes from and what is the relation to the cardiac dipole? That is our first video. So this is schematic representation of the heart and let's take all the cells in the atrium and put it over here and this e square represents the group of atrial myocytes and at rest inside of the cells is negative and outside is positive and if we put two electrodes across this group of cells we will not record any potential difference because all are having positive like positive charge outside and there is no potential difference across but what happens if a group of atrial myocytes undergoes depolarization so if this group of cells undergoes depolarization so here some cells has become negative and most of the cells are positive there is going to be a flow of current from this negative to positive and there is a net vector which developed from all the current flows which we called as the instantaneous vector instantaneous cardiac vector which is going to look something like this and now this positive recording electrode if it is towards uh, uh, this um, instantaneous vector then we are going to record a positive deflection and if this mean vector is going towards a negative electrode of our recording electrodes we are going to have a negative deflection so this negative region within the heart that is the depolarized cells and the positive regions within the heart that is the cells in the resting membrane potential going to act as the two poles so these are the dipoles which is going to act like a battery which generates multiple cardiac current flows across the heart not only across the heart since the body is a volume conductor it spreads all over the body we can record even from the surface if we put two electrodes we could record the deflection and this sum of all the current flowing at a given point of time is the instantaneous cardiac vector and these electrodes records the magnitude of the instantaneous cardiac vector. Let's see how this depolarization progresses in the atria, what will happen. Here more and more negative and the positive has developed. So the waveform in a uh, atrial depolarization which is the P wave which is going to gradually increase and decrease like this. So it will come back to the baseline when all the cells are depolarized everywhere if it is negative then again there is not going to be any potential gradient. So it increases and decreases especially this is lead to the arrangement what we have kept here. This is the electrode in the right arm and this is the electrode in the foot. So in this is the average mean electrical vector of the P wave which is due to atrial depolarization. And again if every, once everything become negative and gradually the cells go back to the resting membrane potential so the repolarization wave somewhat looks like the opposite of what we have seen in the p wave this is p wave and this is called as a atrial t wave which is the atrial wave due to atrial depolarization repolarization here so let's discuss these things in detail in the p wave section but this is the fundamental concept and if we record this instantaneous vector using a negative terminal here and a positive terminal here we are going to record a, even the atrial depolarization will look like a negative wave which actually happens in the AVR. So the AVR will develop a negative P wave because 
the vector is like here and which is going towards the negative terminal of the AV or lead which again we will discuss in detail where what is the AV or lead where it is placed and everything so but this is the fundamental concept where dipole is formed due to two regions of the hot having negative and positive and instantaneous vectors magnitude and direction we are recording by placing electrodes in all directions so this is the uh, another set of electrode kept perpendicular to the instantaneous vector which will actually record a zero so uh, by placing different different electrodes in different different axes we are actually going to find what is the actual direction of a vector indirectly though we are recording in each lead the specific magnitude by uh, recording through multiple axes we are going to understand what is the direction also it's the instantaneous vector so as a summary cardiac dipole you can imagine like a battery which is moving spinning and changing in magnitude okay. so this battery will produce a current which will look like in different direction depending upon the direction of this dipole that we are recording from multiple leads in the ECG and why we need multiple leads because the hot is a three-dimensional structure so the instantaneous vector is can be in multiple direction like it can be in a direction as you have seen we are when you put two leads you are recording actually one in one axis if the recording um, if the actual cardiac vector is perpendicular to this we will be recording only zero potential gradient so to record all the potential gradients which arises due to this cardiac activity we need multiple leads in a routine ECG we use 12 leads 6 in the frontal plane and 6 in the horizontal plane and the ECG will look like this and we call this as a scalar ECG because we are recording only the magnitude of the cardiac activity in one particular axis at a time in 12 different axes we are recording in total if we record this three dimensional activity three dimensional vector its precise location in three dimension with reference to time we call this as a vector cardiogram but this vector cardiogram is not hugely popular with uh, clinicians people have been using this scalar ECG for about 100 years now they can pick up even small small changes here and there so they are used to this Total lead scalar ECG so this is going to stay whereas the actual three-dimensional recording of the instantaneous mean vector is done using this vector cardiogram we will record we'll discuss all these leads and the ECG paper in the next for the class for the lectures uh, thanks for watching if you like please subscribe uh, share and comment if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave into the comment I will find answers for them thank you